Welcome back to Character Conversions, where I try to bring fictional characters to life in D&D. Today we build the Dragon Riding Viking, Hiccup Horrendous Haddock III. For stats, we'll be using the standard array of the player's handbook, divided up as you see here. We prioritize intelligence, as we use our head more than brute force, and we follow up with wisdom and dexterity for some later multiclassing. For race, Hiccup is obviously human. Variant human will increase our intelligence and dexterity by 1 each to 14 and 16 respectively. Our skill of choice will be Animal Handling, where our feet dip into Unearthed Arcana 38 for the Animal Handler feat. This will increase our Wisdom by plus 1 to a 15, double our bonus with the Animal Handling skill, and as a bonus action we can command a friendly beast within 60 feet of us. If you're completely against the use of Unearthed Arcana, change your Racial skill to Survival, and instead take Skill Expert for a plus 1 Wisdom and Proficiency and Expertise with Animal Handling. For background, several on-theme options include Clan Crafter, Shipwright, Sailor, and technically Noble. We will go with Clan Crafter from Sword Coast Adventurer's Guide. This gives us proficiency with History and Insight, Woodcarver's Tools, and for our feature, we have Respect of the Stout Folk. While our own people didn't respect us in the beginning for our lack of combat ability, we will always be respected by Dwarves for our crafting skill. For class, we'll be starting out in the Artificer. This gives us a D8 hit die, proficiency with simple weapons, light and medium armor, as well as shields. We're proficient with constitution and intelligence saves. We're proficient with thieves tools, tinker's tools, and one type of artisan's tool. Let's go with leather worker's tools. And for skills, we'll pick up investigation and perception. As a first level Artificer, we gain magical tinkering, two cantrips, and can repair a number of spells equal to our intelligence modifier, plus half our Artificer level. Magical Tinkering is like an advanced prestidigitation that won't really help us in battle. For cantrips, we'll take Green Flame Blade and Mending. Make sure to prepare Catapult for hitting a Night Fury out of the sky, and Featherfall to represent our later gliding suit. Now with our second level in Artificer, we get our Infusions. We gain four Infusions, but can only have two active at a time. For Infusions, we want Prosthetic Limb, Enhanced Weapon, and Enhanced Defense. Prosthetic Limb is how we fix Toothless's tail, making it our most important pick. Enhanced Weapon will let us grant a weapon a plus one bonus to attack and damage, and Enhanced Defense will increase our AC by one. For a fourth infusion, you can pick whatever you like. As a third level Artificer, we get to choose what type of specialist we are, and we will of course be going with Armorer. This grants us the right tool for the job, Tools of the Trade, two Armorer spells in the form of Magic Missile and Thunder Wave, Arcane Armor, and Armor Model. Tools of the Trade will give us proficiency with Heavy Armor and Smith's Tools. Arcane Armor will allow us to each short or long rest designate a suit of armor as Guardian or Infiltrator Armor. We can freely switch between these two for our build as needed. Most importantly, should we lose a limb, like our leg, our Arcane Armor will work as a prosthetic, allowing us to continue using the prosthetic limb infusion for Toothless. As a 4th level Artificer, we gain our first ability score improvement, so we'll drop this into our Intelligence, raising it to an 18. 5th level now we will jump over to Ranger. This grants us proficiency with one skill, let's pick up Stealth, then we gain Favored Enemy and Natural Explorer. Our favorite enemy is obviously dragons, so we learn the draconic language and have advantage on survival checks to track them, as well as intelligence checks to recall information about them. Our first Natural Explorer is probably the coast, making all forms of travel easier for us, as well as survival in coastal regions. Second level rangers gain a fighting style and spellcasting. For a fighting style, I'd say go with defense, increasing our AC by one when wearing armor, but archery is not a bad choice for this either. For spells, we will grab Ensnaring Strike, which probably is the best representation of how we caught Toothless and Fog Cloud. With our third level in Ranger, we choose our Ranger Conclave. Anyone familiar with the character should know what's coming, we are going with Drake Warden. This grants us Draconic Gift, Drake Companion, Primeval Awareness, and a first level spell. Draconic Gift means we gain the Thaumaturgy Cantrip. Drake Companion lets us, as an action, summon a Drake Companion. It starts out as a small creature though, so no riding it yet. Be sure to choose Lightning Damage to represent how Night Furies were known as the unholy offspring of Lightning and Death. Primeval Awareness allows us to spend a spell slot, and then for one minute per level of that spell, we can sense whether certain creatures are within one mile of us, or six miles if it's a favored terrain. We likely use this for only dragons. For our first level spell, we will grab Animal Friendship. Eighth level and our fourth level in Ranger is our next ability score improvement. We'll drop this into our Dexterity, raising it to a 16. 5th level in Ranger grants us extra attack, and a 2nd level spell. Extra attack means when we take the attack action we can make 2 attacks instead of 1, and for our 2nd level spell this level, we'll grab Animal Messenger. 10th level and our 6th level in Ranger we gain an improvement to our favorite enemy in Natural Explorer. We already have the environment and enemy of the source material, so choose whatever you are needing in your particular campaign. As a 7th level Ranger we gain Bond of Fang and Scale, and a 2nd level spell. Bond of Fang and Scale means our Drake Companion is now medium-sized and can be used as a mount, but while we ride him, he's unable to fly, so we're halfway there at least. 
Magic Fang makes it so his bite attack deals an additional 1d6 lightning damage, and resistance gives him resistance to lightning damage. For a second level spell this level, I recommend Locate Animal and Plants. It makes sure we can find the plants and fish dragons don't like quickly if we need to. At 12th level, we gain our next ability score improvement. To build off the last level, we'll trade this for the Mounted Combatant Feet. This gives us advantage on melee attack rolls against unmounted creatures smaller than our mount, we can force an attack to target our mount instead, and it gives our mount evasion. 13th level and our 9th level in Ranger grants us our first 3rd level spell. We will grab Protection from Energy. 10th level Rangers gain an additional Natural Explorer environment and Hide in Plain Sight. Pick whatever environment suits your campaign for Natural Explorer, and Hide in Plain Sight will allow you to gain a plus 10 bonus to stealth checks with 1 minute of work so long as you don't move. 11th level Drake Wardens gain Drake's Breath, and gain an additional 3rd level spell. Drake's Breath lets us, as an action, either us or our Drake, exhale a 30-foot cone of Acid, Cold, Fire, Lightning, or Poison, and the damage doesn't have to match our Drake's type. Each creature makes a dex save or takes 8d6, half as much on a successful save. We can do this once for free each long rest, and after that, it requires a 3rd level or higher spell slot. For our 3rd level spell, we'll pick up Elemental Weapon to give us some more offensive power if Toothless isn't there. 12th level in Ranger is our next ability score improvement. We'll trade this for the Resilient Feat, increasing our Wisdom by 1 to 16 and giving us proficiency with Wisdom saving throws. 17th level and our 13th level in Ranger means we gain our first 4th level spell. I can't really think of any of them that are the best choice for Hiccup, but let's go ahead and grab Locate Creature. 14th level Ranger means we gain our final favorite enemy and Vanish. Choose a suitable enemy for your campaign, and Vanish will allow you to hide as a bonus action and prevent you from being tracked by non-magical means. At 19th level, we gain Perfected Bond. Our Drake's Breath increases to 10d6 damage, and we gain a 4th level spell. Perfected Bond gives us Empowered Bite, increasing the damage of our Drake's Bite by 1d6 for a total of 2d6. Our Drake grows to large size, meaning we can now fly while riding our Drake. And Reflexive Resistance means when either of us takes damage while within 30 feet of each other, we can use our reaction to gain resistance to the damage. We can also do this a number of times equal to our proficiency bonus each long rest. For our 4th level spell this level, we will take Freedom of Movement. I'd say it's reasonable that after we caught Toothless by entangling him, we would want to make sure it wouldn't happen to him again. 28th level is our final ability score improvement and the capstone of our build. We'll drop this into our dexterity, raising it to an 18. End result sees us with 93 hit points. We're a bit squishy, and for our armor, I'm going to assume we're wearing scale mail because we are riding a dragon, which when combined with enhanced defense and our defense fighting style, we will have an AC of 18. Though honestly, if you want to go without the disadvantage to stealth, just call it Studded Leather and you'll end up with an 18 that way too. Toothless will have 20 AC and 85 hit points. If you can convince your GM, try to get Toothless some sidekick levels from Tasha's. But I won't include that here as the video is long enough. Maybe if this video gets like 100 views and likes, I'll do a separate quick conversion of Toothless as a sidekick for this build. The strategy of this build, like any primary ranger build, is less about being specialized and more about being generalized. We have a nice spread of skills and tool proficiencies, and our spell selection has leaned more towards support with some offense mixed in. In combat, we want to stay on Toothless and stay in the air to attack from range with Toothless's breath weapon and our spells like Catapult. If you can convince your GM to let you have those sidekick levels, it only gets better from there. So since we only fly towards the end of this build, before that you'll want to use hit and run tactics when you can, striking from distance with spells like Catapult, and attacking in melee at advantage while mounted, with mounted combat, or by using flanking when unmounted. Thank you for watching, please like, share, comment your opinions or suggestions for new builds. I hope all your 20s are natural, see you next time.